Okay, why sample? Why not just count everything? The main reason why we sample is because it's typically much too uh, costly in terms of time and or money uh, in order to take a complete census of some population that we're interested in. So um, in this set of short videos, what I'm going to talk about are some definitions initially, which come from Monitoring Vertebrate Populations by William Thompson. It's a great basic text into how to estimate abundance. Um, we'll talk about simple random samples with or without replacement, and then about stratified random samples, which is how we can accommodate heterogeneity or variation in some characteristic across our elements that we're sampling. So, why sample? I already mentioned one reason, which is that it's too expensive to collect a complete sample. Um, and so you could do that in a variety of ways. You could do what is non-random sampling. You could do purposeful sampling, where you pur purposely choose certain types of elements in order to um, collect data on them. You could do it haphazardly, which is very, very common and mistaken often for random sampling. And you could do it by convenience, which is things like um, breeding bird survey and, and other uh, large scale surveys often sample from roadsides. They don't do it because it's good to do it that way. They do it because it's convenient to do it that way. The key feature about a random sample is that if it's done carefully, it means we can extrapolate from our sample to some larger population that we might really be interested in. So when we talk about the population of breeding birds along roadsides, we're not really interested in that, in that uh, sample of birds along roadsides. We're really trying to say something about the population of a species across the entire continent, and that's why we collect the data. The trouble is, is that the samples are not randomly chosen, so there may be inherent bias in how uh, those populations actually relate to the true population. Whereas if we take a random sample, um, on average, that bias is zero. That's the, that's the key reason why we do random sampling. So there's a few sampling terms that we're going to talk about. Elements are the things that we are actually collecting the data on or that we're particularly interested in. And those elements are occurring within some sampling unit. So, and we'll give example, I'll give you some examples of each of these things in a moment. Those sampling units, the whole lot of them, form what we call the sampling frame. That's where we're drawing our sample from. And that sample frame also represents then the population, the sampled population inside that uh, sampling frame. Those are the elements. Then there's also the target population, which is those elements that we'd like to draw inference about. And ideally, the sampled population and the target population are the same, but there might be circumstances where that's not true. So what is an element then? An element is just gonna be, if we're looking for uh, say trees in a, in a forest, uh, we're simply gonna be counting the trees within uh, a certain area. So each of these dots might represent a tree. The target population in this case is all of the trees within that sampling frame that we are uh, going to be drawing our inference about. A sample unit in this case is just going to be one of these squares. So these are the things we're going to be randomly choosing. So um, in a forest it might be a 10 meter by 10 meter quadrat and there might be a hundred of those quadrats across the entire sampling frame. So, this, yeah. so the sampling frame, that's all of the quadrats that we're going to be drawing our inference from. And our sample population is, and the target population, are ideally everything that is inside the sampling frame. So the sampling population is, is that that we're going to be drawing samples from. The target population is ideally that whole thing. Now, when, it, when might it not be the case? 
It might not be the case if we have, for example, in the case of a forest, or we're talking about uh, pheasant nests now out in the sand hills of Nebraska, there may be blocks of private land that we can't access. So we can count the nests around the private land, we can count all of those sampling units that are outside the private land, but we can't get access to the ones inside the private land. Or it might be all private land, which is more likely in Nebraska, but there's some landowners that are not willing to allow us to do the study. Um, so in this case, the sample population is going to be what's inside that frame, less those blocks that we can't sample. The target population is the whole area. And what we're hoping is that the sample population is a good representation of that. If they're identical, then it's, that's as good as it gets. Um, in many cases, they're not, and we have to be aware of that potential bias between the places that we can sample and the places that we can't. So let's talk about a specific kind of survey, in particular the breeding duck survey that's carried out every year by uh, biologists in the Fish and Wildlife Service in the United States and um, also in the uh, Canadian Wildlife Service up in the, uh, our northern neighbor. And for many years, uh, the breeding duck survey was also carried out in Nebraska, in particular in the Sand Hills area of Nebraska, which is indicated on the figure here. The breeding duck survey is done as an aerial survey, and they fly straight line transects within each area. And each of those transects is divided up into 18 mile long segments. So the, an aircraft flies along each of those segments and biologists count the birds that they can see out the windows. And so what they're doing is they're, they're flying at a, a specific speed and altitude. And what the observers can see out at the side of the aircraft is uh, birds that are occurring within a 660 foot approximately uh, distance of the track of the aircraft. So they basically have a long, 18 mile long, 1300 foot wide strip that they're counting all the ducks in. Um, one of the observers also counts whether or not they, you know, they're flying over water to get an indication of how much water there is on the landscape. So what do they count? Uh, they count drakes and pairs, which is a, a hen and a drake, uh, flocked drakes and flocked ducks. Um, those are various uh, kinds of things that are not, uh, uh, so they're interested really in getting the number of breeding pairs. And if they see a drake, they assume that means there's a hen nearby. If there's a group of drakes, it's more than four of them, then that means there's, they're not, uh, um, not mated, uh, not mating, not breeding. That's the term I'm looking for. All right. So with that in mind, what I'd like you to do is to think about for the ducks, what is the element that we're interested in in this particular case? What is the sampling unit? And then what is the sample frame that we're drawing that from? And then the sample population and the target population. So I want you to pause the video at this point and then think about that. Write down what you think those elements are and then I'll explain what they are in the next few moments. All right. What are the elements that we're after? Well, the elements are the ducks. So either pairs of ducks or non-breeding ducks. Those are the things that we're actually interested in trying to figure out how many of them there are. The sampling units are the 18 mile long, 1300 foot wide strips that are along each of those transects. The sample frame is within the uh, sand hills. What are all of the possible 18 mile long, 1300 foot wide strips? Right? So that you could, you could imagine drawing a sample from all of those possible uh, areas. The sample population is going to be ducks that are breeding or at least living in the sand hills. And because it's an aerial survey, the target population is pretty much the same thing as well. Now, whether 
we're really interested in the ducks that are living in the uh, in the sand hills or not, or counting how many of them there are, um, depends on what we're going to do with that information. So um, the element is the ducks that we're counting. The units are those 18 mile long strips. The sample frame is the collection of all of those 18 mile long strips that are inside the sand hills and the sample population and target population are the ducks that are breeding and living in the sand hills at the time of the survey. Were those uh, transects sampled randomly? Well, the units are clearly not random because they are uh, lined up in long strips uh, that consist of multiple sampling units. That's a matter of convenience because aircraft like to fly in straight lines and, and you don't want to be zigzagging around all over the landscape when you could be counting ducks. Um, as far as I can tell, nobody actually knows whether the particular uh, north-south positions of those transects were randomly sampled, but they certainly seem very systematic in nature. And in general, um, that's true for much of the survey uh, across the entire continent, that there is uh, not a random sample. So in this case, we're drawing from a relatively homogeneous population, the sand hills of Nebraska, and so we're hoping that we can get a, a decent uh, estimate of, of the number of ducks that are out there on the landscape. Um, but because it's not a random sample, we're not 100% confident that that would be the case.